such an honor for me uh, to do this for the two of you. And also for, for, for you, Mama, I'm so happy to meet you. Uh, <laughs> during this counseling session, I've got to kind of have an idea of who you are <laughs> uh, through the wonderful work you've done in raising these two. And I've uh, uh, And yeah, marriage is a beautiful thing. And we did uh, premarital counseling, so I'm not going to repeat what we said uh, over a period of what, uh, maybe four or five content sessions. Um, but what I do want to say is that a marriage is a, and, and I did say this to you in the counseling session, but I said a marriage is a, is a couple. Start of 2020, while I was planning my New Year's resolutions, after two years of unsuccessful online dating, <laughs> I thought it was time for me to delete my online profile. So I went on Christian Cafe, and just as I was about to press the delete button, I noticed that there were some messages in my inbox. The third message I read was from this handsome man in Norway. <laughs> and I thought, what the heck is a Norway? <laughs> I read this message and it immediately caught my eye and I had to respond. A colleague of mine had the same week recommended Christian coffee for me and I thought, why not? I created a pro profile and on the second day I found this beautiful lady and uh, I sent her a message. And the following day, I woke up to her message, and it was Sam. Uh, we exchanged messages for a bit, and we decided to continue on WhatsApp. Yeah, and after a week, uh, I thought it was time for us to take it to the next step. <laughs> um, and the next step was not um, something <laughs> strange. It was starting to talk to each other on phone. So, um, yeah, we spoke for about an hour the first time and, uh, yeah, the conversation was good. So, fast forward to October, we had spent approximately 200 hours talking to each other on WhatsApp video. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I was starting to fall for this man and I desperately wanted to meet him face to face. But due to COVID-19, Restrictions were imposed um, on our countries and he could not come in because our borders were closed. While we were miles apart and separated due to the global pandemic, I knew she was the one and I asked her to be my girlfriend um, and I told her, Gia Mutanda. <laughs> and then it was official. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm continuing. Yeah, yeah after uh, 20 hours, um, this is our first meeting, that was last December. After 20 hours of flight, I finally landed in Durban, South Africa. I got my luggage, headed toward arrivals, and there she was. I could not believe how easy it was when we finally met in person. We spent five days in Mushanga and on the fifth day he joined my family for Christmas lunch. So coming from a Zulu family, you all know that a man is not supposed to enter the household unless he's asking for a bill and a marriage. So this was definitely an exception. But my, board, my parents thought it was necessary to meet this man that I was dating because he was from another country. <laughs> Little did I know though that this would be his first and final meeting with my dad because he passed away in less than two, three weeks. Um, so we definitely know that this time it was got a date. Mm. Uh, in our early days of chatting online, uh, actually I think it was like the first couple of weeks, Sam had already told me about Lobola, so I was prepared. Uh, and uh, because of the pandemic, we decided to do the neg negotiations online via Zoom. Uh, and this way, uh, no, this was definitely uh, something different than we had ever experienced in my family. If you know, Nor Norway is quite like equal when it comes to genders and we don't, you, we do it completely different. Um, so 
my family had some reservations about me paying a price <laughs> for Sam. And um, after the meeting, we had yeah, a lovely meeting actually, it was quite nice. Uh, my family also walked away with a different feeling towards Lubula. And we had like more appreciative thoughts about it and the whole process, yeah. So after three months then, after the Lubula negotiations, I tried to get into Norway. But unfortunately, their borders were still closed and we decided to change our, way, our plans. Um, at that time, we had decided that we were going to get married in Norway. I mean, in South Africa. So it was Norway, but we changed to South Africa. So Per flew out to South Africa in the middle of our third pandemic. And just as we had thought we, sorry, we had, we had to get him in as quickly as possible because we thought the borders would close again. Mm. And then, so we got him in and just as we thought we were over that hurdle, we woke up on the day we were supposed to get married to riots in Peter Maritzburg. <laughs> So we were told that before we could get married, because I was marrying a foreigner, I needed to do an interview with Home Affairs. So we spoke to the pastor and he said, well, let's go and try. So we drove to Home Affairs and when we got there, it was utter chaos, looting on the streets, burning. Um, and we called the pastor and he told us to head to the police station where we would get an affidavit because he was intended on getting, mar getting us married. <laughs> so we got to the police station, tons of people there, people trying to bail out their family members who had looted. <laughs> we got an affidavit done and then we had to rush as quickly as we could to the church to get married. Mm. So that day we got married in jeans and a tractor top. <laughs> Thankfully, we got a flight out as soon as possible, being the next day. To Cape Town, where we spent our honeymoon. <laughs> and Sam told me to jump to November now in our trip, even though we had like she was in Norway in October, and I ended up in, up in hospital and lost my driver license. But that's not exciting enough for Sam. So, <laughs> if you want to know the story, you can tell. Like, ask me afterwards. Um, but in November, me and my family had booked flights. Uh, an accom accommodation to attend today's wedding here in South Africa and we woke up to the news of Omicron uh, that was discovered here and in a matter of hours countries started imposing restrictions um, towards uh, upon South Africa and Norway soon followed suit and their flights or well, my flight was cancelled and um, we were left stranded unfortunately while I am here today um, celebrating this day with all of you, um, we had been planning for, um, yeah, we had been planning actually that trip for months, and my family was quite excited to, to come, but it didn't work out. And while our journey is a unique one in many ways, it has not been an easy one, and we are thankful that we have made it this far. And we are also thankful for all of you that took the time to come and celebrate with us. So here's to the continuation oh. of our journey. Yes. <laughs> As clear as I 
again I'm not sugar-coated Just thought that you should know Every time I close my eyes You're the first place that I go in I'm starting to notice all the reasons why You're taking me so Claire and Sam, as you know, you're about to start a lifetime together. And much has been, much time, resources have been invested into making this day a special day. Choosing the venue, deciding what food to have, uh, what clothes to wear, the wedding invitations, everything. A lot of time and effort. But the preparations for today are not, is not what's most important. What's more important is your preparation for a lifetime of living together. So that one day you too can live, uh, you can say you've lived happily, like the fairy tales say, happily ever after. And the reality that for Christian marriages is you can do this because God has given us his blueprint for marriage. So there will be times when, 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 when you face difficulties and um, when you are uh, having to adapt to the changes of living in close proximity. I mean, we've got Pear who comes from the very north and Sam from the very south and now they're going to be living together. But God can make that possible and give you a deeply satisfying and enjoyable marriage. You have equal status and value, but you have different responsibilities. So Sam, what is the implication of this mystery for you? You need to realize that Pear is your head. Your attitude to Pear must be the same attitude that the church has to Jesus, their head. As a church, we submit to the leadership of Jesus. We seek his guidance, we honor and we obey him. And if your attitude to Pear is the, is the same attitude to Jesus, then you're stepping into God's plan for your marriage. There will be times when Pear doesn't behave in a Christ-like manner, but that does not alter the fact that he is still your head. And now turning to Pear, the Bible says a lot more about your responsibilities as a husband. The impact of this mystery for you is you need to realize that Sam is your body. And it would appear you take good care of your body. You look strong and healthy. And you spend every time day washing, eating, sleeping, doing all the things you need to stay strong and healthy. And if you treat Sam as your body, then you will discover God's way to live in this marriage. You need to be to Sam what Jesus is to the church. And this can be summed up in one word, love. It's a sacrificial love willing to make any sacrifice, not counting the cost. It's a love that um, is a cleansing love. Paul says that Jesus cleanses his bride by washing her with the word um, in order to present himself one day a radiant bride without stain, wrinkle or blemish. And today before you, you have a beautiful, radiant bride. And if you want to know the secret of keeping this beautiful radiant bride in 10 years or 20 years or 50 years then you need to wash her with the word of god when the kids have worn her out when she is tired and feeling down pray for her read the word of god to her build her up with his word and encourage her then you will have a bride for your whole marriage who is as radiant as and finally, and in conclusion, Christians, we need to remember that the primary purpose in life is to live our lives for God 
and to walk in His ways. We need to live our lives so that we give all glory and honor to God. He deserves it all. And your marriage is not primarily to bring you pleasure, although it will do lots of that. But the primary purpose of your marriage is to bring glory and honor to God.